Hey kids, Comic Book Man here, and I'm with my good buddy JR. It's JR. And we're here to do media news, or yeah. I should say he's here to yes. do media news. Yeah, he's just going to listen. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a shill. I'm just loves, a hack. I'm just hanging around. He media news I'm, more I'm, than anything. Gosh, yes, Batman. What's going on in media news? I hear I hear there's a Star Trek movie coming out. We are, as we tape Beat me up. I, as we're taping, we're a mere five weeks away. Five weeks away from J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. No 10, 11, 12 subtitle. This would be number 43, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. 43 yeah. in, a, in a series of 622. Great. But, but, the good news is, and we're Star Trek fans. Yeah. We're Star Trek yeah. fans. Yeah. Uh, we're a little leery of this new one. Yeah. But uh, yeah. what bodes well for it is Paramount is showing a great deal of confidence in the film for a couple of reasons. First off, they're going to show it a month in advance of its release at the Australian, uh, the Sydney Opera House in Australia. You know what that means? Reviews are going to be all over the internet. Oh. So if this thing stinks, everyone's <laughs> going to know about it a month ahead of time. If they're willing to show it a month in, uh, ahead of time, they must be pretty high on it. So, I guess. And it's actually, not only are the stars going to be there and the director and the writers and the cast and crew, but they've opened up a certain amount of seating for... Fans. Oh God! At a thousand dollars a pop. So are we going? If you, are we going? <laughs> uh, only if uh, Bo's going to pay a thousand dollars for our seats. Uh, the other, the other thing that they're doing that really bodes well for the, for the film is they've already asked J.J. Abrams to get his staff together to make to, to write the script for the follow up already. They asked Number forty four. Exactly, exactly. And they want to know how soon he can have it done. Well, J.J. says we can have a script by December. December. December of this December. year. And he's brought on yet another one of his lost writers, Damon Lindelof. So it's it's three lost writers that are doing this thing. So since this will be a second one, will this one be Wrath of Khan? It will be Wrath of Khan. Oh. And I think Khan <laughs> is going to be played by Keanu Reeves at some point. <laughs> Great. It's going to be fabulous. But Paramount says if you can have the script ready by December, we'd like the film to be ready by 2011. So we may be looking down the throat of yet another Star Trek film before this one even hits the screen. Heaven help us. Yeah. So that's good news. Um, I, I hear I hear that one of the members of the Star Trek film might be in line for yet another franchise. Two, two franchises. Two, count them, two franchises for Chris Pine, who plays Captain James T. Kirk, the younger. Uh, the Warners is interested in him playing the Green Lantern. So there's something for a young actor to be part of two franchises right off the top of his career. So. You know what they could do? Hmm. Have Shatner in the Green Lantern film. He can play one of the Guardians. He's fat enough yes. now. Just blew him up and put a red oh. robe on him. He's all set. And give him a big head. And give him a big head. There he's, you already, go. He's, already he's already got it. Never mind. The inflated yeah. ego, yep. so it's all good. Um, what else do we have for you here? Oh, Sasha Baron Cohen's follow-up to Borat oh, okay. called Bruno. Bruno. Bruno, which is sort of a, a feat, supermodel-esque individual. I heard they're shooting it. It's done. Okay. And it's screened for um, the MPAA who slapped it with an NC-17. <laughs> <laughs> Is he naked in an elevator oh, again? Oh, <laughs> there's all sorts of uh, uh, simulated um, stuff. Things. Stuff. But uh, what's going to happen is is uh, the studio doesn't want it to be an NC-17. Why so not? Course, well, it's kind of hard to, s to sell Happy Meals. <laughs> when oh, you... make it an R then. <laughs> make it an R like Watchmen. Well, they are going to, They are gonna. Sasha Baron Cohen's going to cut it down to an R rating. And you're going to get the inevitable multiple DVDs. So all you Sasha Baron Cohen fans out there, see it in a the theater, then buy 60 versions of it on DVD. But Borat sure was darn funny, so... Yeah, it was funny as hell. Borat funny should be so. equally as funny. All what right, uh, Transformers. You know, if you guys... Oh, like I Transformers, love Transformers. Yeah. You know, oh, <laughs> what was it, Scorpion or oh, whatever? whatever. What was it? I, I don't know. It's like... Her Scorpion. Scorpion. It's... Yeah. it's Painful yeah, I, mean, I, I was watching I was watching Watchmen again last week. I went to go back to see it a second time because I wanted to see it a second time. They ran the Transformers trailer at the beginning of it. I'm sitting there watching this with Bocephus, and about halfway through it, I turned over to him, and I've said this to Jar many times. I turned over to, to Bocephus, and I said, there's not a damn thing in here I'm interested in seeing. There really isn't. There's I, I can't find anything at all that I have any interest in getting no. off my butt and seeing it. I've movie. tried to plow through the first one on HBO multiple times. I've Me tried too, yeah. I've watching it in chunks because I can't sit through the whole thing. But if you're interested interested you guys the third one's already going to be made it's happening uh it's it's a it's a money machine so they're just going to keep cranking these things out and i'm sure they'll be all as equally as wonderful as the first oh, one I'm... yeah so let's move on to greener pastures yes. um mick g mick g <laughs> mick g oh i remember him yes the guy who's making terminator salvation and hopefully yeah. not ruining the terminator it's... franchise i saw the trailer for terminator too when i watched oh, that's Watchmen. great isn't yeah, it yeah i'll oh. Actually, actually, it looked like it looked like they were trying to do an Aliens two with it. It looked like they're actually trying to do something different with it. It could be. It, it's going to be action packed. But yeah. McGee is going to move on to literary pastures with his next film, 
20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is his next project. Oh, God. Yes, it's a vivid oh. reimagining of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And if we both hear the term vivid reimagining one more time in, in our lives, we're going to vomit profusely. Vivid reimagining is code word for in the shitter. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be modern day. And yeah. Whatever they want to do with that one. Um, jumping back a bit to Eric Bana, who was in the Star Trek film. Oh, okay. he plays the bald guy, the Romulan guy with the tattoos yeah. on his face. Yeah, he also played Bruce Banner in the first Hulk film. Exactly. He is uh, moving on to a movie called The Time Traveler's Wife, based on a really great novel. Uh, yeah, I've heard good things about it. It's that. a really great novel, but they had to hold up production on it because of his bald head. They had to wait oh. for his hair to grow back in because wigs look terrible on people in movies. So that's coming. That'll be out in um, 2011. Look for that. If you can read the novel, read it. It's really good. Okay. Um, Tom Hanks. God bless Tom Hanks. Major Matt Major Mason. Major Matt Mason. And I didn't realize this until today, but you are also a Major Matt Mason. Uh, yeah, I, when I was, Major Matt Mason was Barbie for him and me exactly. when we were growing up. We were little girls. We would have we would have collected Barbie, but we weren't, so we collected Major, Major Matt, Matt Mason. Mason. Not that G.I. Joe crap. Yeah, no, nobody wants that. But uh, what's happened is Tom Hanks, also of our age, also of our age, our age uh, grew up with Major Matt Mason as well, has bought the rights to Major Matt Mason to make a major motion picture. That's going to be loads of fun. And the reason why he bought it, if you couldn't tell by his history of work with Apollo 13 and the From the Earth to the Moon series, he's a big space nut. Yep. Like me. Like me. Like So we're all the three of us are big space nuts. So Hanks and you and me, we're all going to go and we're going to have a good time yep. watching this thing. Maybe. Major Matt Mason, for those of you who don't know, was an action figure uh, who, there, there were a bunch of different ones. You could buy all sorts of, not suits, not clothes, uh, because they were little rubber bodies, but you could buy all these uh, vehicles and stuff mm -hmm. and, and space stations and, and all sorts of crap you could buy with it and set up your own little moon base. And the idea behind it was if the space program had kept going at the pace it was in the early 60s, by the mid-80s we'd have bases on the moon, on the moon. and we'd be riding around in cars on the moon and, and jet packs and all this great stuff, none of which ever happened because Lord knows we have better things to spend our money on than going into space. Yeah, and wars yeah. and stuff. Yeah, wars and crap. Yeah, things you know. like that. Yeah, and discos and, and, yeah. and yeah. Blow, blow and all sorts of good stuff. <laughs> I did what? Never mind. I don't know what you're talking about. But, all right, and you know what, Tim? I'm receiving a word from our, our WTF department. Yes. They're telling me that the Farrelly brothers, Yes. the Farrelly brothers, who gave us There's Something About Mary and really nothing else Oh, since. I know where you're going with this. Sweetney! Yeah, the Three Stooges are coming back. Now, this the, the concept here is that the Three Stooges movie by the Farrelly Brothers yeah. is going to be an hour and a half, two hours in length, but it will be made up of consecutive short subjects strung together. Three. Three short subjects strung together. The, the Stooges, it's not a biopic. No. It's going to be three short subjects. The Stooges will be in modern day. Okay? Now, I just I just hope somebody shoots a big a big missile at him and they're all riding on the missile out out of out a door and up into the sky. Well, that'll take place. That's instead of the jackasses at the end of every studio. Or the jackass, the jackasses, yeah, yeah the yeah. jackasses. Uh, but here's the Saturday Night Live part of this uh, this story. The casting is just brilliant. Sean Penn. Yes. Sean Penn is going to play Larry. Benicio del Toro. The thinker. Yeah. <laughs> the thinker stooge. Benicio del Toro is going to play Mo, The authoritarian. And Jim Carrey is going to play Curly. Who the fool. Did, and he said he's going to pack on 50 pounds to play the part. Oh, God bless him. This has bacon changed. A's. This has bacon changed. A's, Jim. Get bacon load, A's. Load up on donuts and milkshakes, and you'll put that 50 pounds on like nothing. Uh, and that's pretty much it for us. I can't even think of anything to say after the three Before stages. we get out of here, I want to... Do a birthday shout out yes. to our favorite actor, Chris Walken. Yes. Happy birthday, Happy Chris. Birthday, Chris. We're we going to get you a watch. But we, We're you know storing what? it right yeah, now. We have it in a special place for you. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's almost ripe. It's exactly. almost ripe. We're going to get it out to you real soon. Come back soon for our entertainment stimulus package or whatever you want to call it. Goodbye. Later.